The launch date for Flight 8 is taking shape, fueling anticipation while Pad B nears completion. Meanwhile, the Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel has issued key recommendations for NASA's Artemis program, and Japan has achieved another milestone in space exploration. Let's dive into these updates on today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's been two weeks since the seventh Starship mission, and all eyes are now on Flight 8, with expectations running higher than ever, especially in addressing the unfinished goals of Flight 7. Naturally, the most pressing questions is when the next launch will take place. A recent update from the Federal Communications Commission has provided the first major hint, and other sources have confirmed that SpaceX teams are optimistic about a launch before the end of February. According to the newly announced FCC license update, the approved operational window for Flight 8 extends from February 24th to a month later on August 24th, 2025. While this time frame provides a broad range, the most crucial takeaway is the starting date, implying that Flight 8 will not launch before February 24th. If this timeline holds, the soonest possible launch is about three weeks away marking a turnaround time of just over a month since Flight 7. This timeline is understandable, as SpaceX continues working through post-flight analysis and coordination with the FAA, addressing debris handling, investigating the cause of the ship failure, and implementing necessary upgrades. Work on resolving these issues began immediately after Flight 7, but no further details have been disclosed by either SpaceX or the FAA. A recent claim suggested that some SpaceX engineers and QA staff were fired for allegedly bypassing the S-33 check to meet the launch schedule, but Musk directly refuted this, stating the claim was not accurate. This indicates that the Flight 7 anomaly was a technical challenge rather than a result of negligence, and SpaceX is taking all necessary steps to ensure a successful Flight 8. While the end of February seems like a reasonable target, many are hoping for an earlier launch. The good news is that progress remains steady, with no significant damage reported from the last flight. The FAA has also introduced procedural improvements that should allow for a faster turnaround, keeping hopes high for a timely launch. SpaceX's preparations are progressing efficiently. The launch system continues to undergo inspections and refurbishment, though no significant issues have been reported, meaning it could be ready for action at any time. Meanwhile, on the hardware side, Ship 34 is currently receiving its engines after completing cryogenic testing at Massey. Cameron County has announced a brief road closure on the 4th of February, likely for the transport of either Booster 16 or Ship 34, though the latter seems more probable. If so, this movement would mark a key milestone, the static fire test. Once completed, the ship will have successfully undergone its independent tests, bringing Flight 8 one step closer to launch. Even if the launch system is prepared in advance, Booster 15's movement is expected later, which means two static fires could take place in the coming weeks. Once this step is complete, SpaceX will need additional time to finalize system checks and installations, including the flight termination system, payload integration, payload dispenser, and hot staging modifications. While these additional steps will extend the timeline slightly, they are critical for ensuring a smooth mission and maintaining safety standards. Given the current pace of progress, the end of February target still appears feasible. The FCC's timeline offers an estimate, but final launch clearance depends on FAA approvals and SpaceX's internal readiness. Musk and the company have not provided further updates following the post-flight review of Flight 7, leaving some uncertainty. However, if all goes as planned, a late February launch would be an exciting milestone. With each Starship flight, SpaceX continues to push the boundaries of spaceflight and refine its vehicle reusability. Every test provides new insights, helping improve designs, optimize systems, and move closer to routine Starship launches. While challenges remain, the rapid progress at Starbase signals that a new era of space travel is within reach. If you're as excited as we are for Flight 8, reply this month in the comment section and let us know. After that, Show your support by liking the video and subscribing to our channel if you haven't already to keep following SpaceX's journey. Your contribution is invaluable and motivates us to deliver the latest updates with the next milestone being 170,000 subscribers. More importantly, we'll continue to follow SpaceX's ambitious journey together as they pioneer the future of space exploration. Thank you for being part of this incredible adventure. In the meantime, SpaceX is making rapid progress not just on the vehicle and Pad A, but also on the nearby Pad B system. The most significant development so far is the advancement of the Mechazilla arms. 
After being lifted into place, the main arms and the chopstick carriage were successfully connected. On the afternoon of January 27th, multiple recordings captured the crane hoisting the system onto the tower. Shortly after, the chopstick carriage was firmly attached to the structure and the assembly framework was removed, signaling that its role in the installation process was complete. Work on the chopstick system is far from complete. The arms currently represent only the initial phase with modifications ahead. Welding will extend their length and additional components including the pulley system will be installed. Below, the orbital launch mount system continues its construction at the Sanchez site, surrounded by a dense network of scaffolding. Nearby, pipes are being lifted and assembled to form the flame bucket system. If progress continues at this pace, these systems should be fully assembled before being transported to Pad B for final installation. If this progress holds, Pad B could be completed within the month, paving the way for testing. This timeline aligns with SpaceX's plans, as Flight 8 will not involve catching the Starship. That milestone is expected to begin with Flight 9, and many analyses suggest that Tower B will play an immediate role in this crucial step. The long-awaited era of the two towers is now within reach, potentially as early as the first half of this year. When it arrives, it will represent a historic leap toward full rocket reusability, achieved by the world's largest rocket. Are you ready for this groundbreaking moment in spaceflight history? In other news, the Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel has raised concerns about NASA's approach to the Artemis program, urging a review of its mission plans to mitigate risks. On January 30th, the panel recommended that NASA reassess its current objectives, particularly for Artemis 3, to ensure a more balanced and manageable level of risk across the program. The agency believes that NASA is placing too many challenges on a single mission, which could jeopardize its success. Bill Bray, a member of the panel, highlighted these concerns, stating, Each first milestone carries its own individual risk, and as these risks are compounded and aggregated, it only increases the overall risk posture for any individual flight mission. It really begs the question, is it time for the agency to reassess the current mission objectives and its approach for Artemis 3 and beyond with the goal to better balance the risks across all those flight tests? The concerns raised are valid as Artemis 3 introduces several groundbreaking elements. This mission aims to demonstrate the capabilities of the Starship Lunar Lander, test Axiom's new spacesuit, and complete 13 key tasks each presenting technical and operational challenges. Additionally, changes to the Orion heat shield add another layer of uncertainty. The panel's concerns extend to future missions, including Starship's role in Artemis IV, Blue Moon's debut in Artemis V, and the long-term vision for the Lunar Gateway. Bray emphasized the difficulty in coordinating these elements, noting each of these elements under development and delivery requires near-perfect execution across a complex set of tests and milestones, with very little room for failure. With the complexity of these missions, delays and risk factors are growing. The panel suggests NASA should take inspiration from the Apollo program where each mission focused on specific goals, ensuring clear progression and risk mitigation. This approach helped Apollo achieve steady advancement toward the moon landing. Another issue is the uneven progress among participating organizations. SpaceX has made significant strides with Starship, though technical challenges remain. Blue Origin has also made progress, but New Glenn's debut flight revealed both successes and setbacks. However, the most pressing issues stem from NASA's own infrastructure, its launch systems, rockets, and spacecraft, directly impacting the timeline for Artemis II. Despite these challenges, there is optimism, especially with SpaceX's Starship consistently hitting unprecedented milestones. The human landing system version of Starship is also advancing, strengthening confidence in its role in future lunar missions. As discussions continue, the space community eagerly awaits updates from ASAP and NASA to see if the Artemis program will undergo any significant changes. And for our final item in today's update, on February 2nd at 3.30 a.m. Eastern, Japan's H-3 rocket successfully lifted off from the Tanegashima Space Center, marking another milestone in the country's space ambitions. The primary mission was to place the Michibiki-6 satellite, part of Japan's quasi-Zenith satellite system, into orbit. This launch significantly enhances Japan's GPS system, adding critical capabilities to its navigation infrastructure. 
The 1,900 kilogram Michibiki 6 satellite will enhance Japan's GPS system, providing critical positioning, navigation, and timing services. Positioned at 90.5 degrees east in the geostationary belt, it orbits 35,786 kilometers above the equator. Michibiki 6 is the latest addition to Japan's expanding constellation, following the first satellite launched in 2010. Japan is now considering expanding the system to 11 satellites for added redundancy, as stated in a 2024 policy document from the Japanese cabinet office. The successful launch marked a major achievement for the H-3 rocket, which faced setbacks in March of 2023 due to a second stage engine failure. With this mission, H-3 has proven its reliability as a cost-effective launch vehicle ready to compete in the commercial market. It's also paving the way for international missions with upcoming launches for the UAE and UTELSAT, reflecting Japan's growing ambitions for global space cooperation. This mission, Japan's first rocket launch of 2025, follows the milestone achievement of launching the Resilience Lunar Lander with the US's Blue Ghost aboard a Falcon 9. With these successes, Japan is firmly establishing itself as a prominent player in space exploration this year. The successful H-3 launch highlights Japan's growing influence in space exploration. As they push the limits of satellite technology, the future is full of possibilities. Japan's journey is just beginning, and the best is yet to come. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thanks for joining us, and remember, keep looking up. The stars are waiting for us.